All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to convert the Tamiya flatbed trailer into a low boy. It's a 3D printed kit available on Thingiverse, link in the description. For the most part, all you really need to build a two axle trailer is the Tamiya kit and the 3D printed parts. It does help to have a few bags of M3 screws and nuts though. Some of the parts are quite large. With the 220mm print bed on my printer, you do have to think a bit to get some of the parts on. Also, my printer is getting on a bit now, and it isn't as accurate as it once was. So, while the parts are pretty close, sometimes the larger parts can be a tiny bit out in the x-axis. Where I can, I'm going to use button head screws instead of the Tamiya ones. It'll be something along the lines of M3x8s, 10s and 16s. I think there's a couple that are around M3x25 too. But if you've been 3D printing for a while, you're most likely going to have a stash of screws ready to go anyway. Starting at the rear, we have the bits for a twin axle chassis. There's some extra bits to extend it to fit a single Lisu folding axle, which we might still add in the future, but for now the two Tamiya ones are going to do just fine. The cross members need the holes tapping with an M3 tap, otherwise they might split. But again, if you've been 3D printing, you're most likely going to have a few taps in your toolkit. The rear bumper seems to want to use M3x8s to mount, and the cross members M3x16s. Another thing 3D printer people will be quite used to, the holes do need clearing out with a 3mm drill. Nicer printers might be okay as is, but it never hurts to run a drill bit through the holes. With the cross members in the chassis, it already feels nice and strong. The cross members lock into square recesses in the rails, which means you can't really build it with a twist. Very nice design. The light bar slots into the rear of the chassis and we use two M3x8s to pull it into place. Next, the chassis offers up to the mount using two screws on each side, except while the lower holes line up, the upper hole is around a millimetre out. There's a comment on the Thingiverse page suggesting that there are some misaligned holes, but in this case it's fairly minor. If we use some more M3x16s and plain nuts in the bottom holes, we can use a 3mm drill to adjust the top hole. I'm using a rather cheap and nasty electric screwdriver I got for Christmas. It's slow, but fairly torquey. The included drill bit I think is made of some sort of hard cheese. They all bent the first time I tried to use them, but it does work pretty well for cleaning up the holes in the 3D printed parts. Now we can install two more M3x16s with the nuts. We will be removing the top screws later to mount the dampers, but at this stage we just need to make sure everything's going to fit. Also, I am going to be painting the chassis, so I'm just using plain nuts. The paint's going to gum up the threads, so I'm not at all worried about them coming loose. If you're not painting them though, I would use some nylocks. For the front, we need to assemble the gooseneck. The two halves slot together with overlapping tabs. A bit of glue might be a good idea, but I reckon we're going to be okay just with the screws. We need the two halves to sit nicely, so there might be a little bit of trimming here and there to get things spot on. Looking at the four holes in the front is a good indicator that things are just in the right spot. The gooseneck mounts to the chassis with this funky looking hook arrangement. It mounts to the gooseneck with three M3x16s with plain nuts. The nuts have cutouts to drop into, then we offer up and thread in the four screws. I think if anything's going to be a weak point of this conversion, it's going to be the hooks on this part. But we will try it. I suppose worst case, we can just glue it solid if we really need to. A bit further up, there's the cross brace that needs two M3x8s with plain nuts. Nice and simple. At the very front, we have the coupler plate. Now, I'd like to have seen it integrate the metal part from the Tamiya kit, but the plastic part's probably going to be just fine. It's pretty thick with all the layers of plastic, and the extra friction really isn't going to make that much of a difference. What we do need to do though is clean up the holes and clean up the countersinks. We will use a countersink bit and make them deep enough that the screws will be slightly below the surface. We need to make sure they're not going to get hung up on anything when the trailer's attached to the truck. I'm using M3x12 countersunk screws with more plain nuts. Now I didn't have any stainless, but the black ones are going to work just as well. To fit the gooseneck to the chassis mount, all we need to do is hook it on, press it down so it's fully seated, and as usual there might be a bit of trimming needed to get it spot on, then we use two 4mm banana plugs. 
A bit of an odd choice from the designer, but with a few taps they do seem pretty secure. It keeps the gooseneck removable too, which might come in handy. Right, a little bit later on, and after a bit of primer and paint, we have two assemblies ready to use. So, next we need the Tamiya trailer, so we can remove the bits we need. So next we need the Tamiya trailer, so we can remove all the bits we need for the conversion. We'll deal with the axles first. We need the whole suspension assembly, which is fairly easy to remove as a single unit. First we need to take the wheels off though, so we can get access to all the screws. Now on each side we have the tops of the dampers and the three screws in the middle. They all have grip nuts on the back, so we need a cross wrench on the inside and we can unscrew the screws. When all ten are out, we can lift the assembly from the chassis. Next, the suspension assembly slots in over the chassis rails on the conversion and we can pop in the two longer middle screws. On the inside, we use Tamiya M3 flange grip nuts. There's holes in the chassis to take the nuts. However, the nuts are a tight fit, so they need to get pulled into place. The stock screws don't quite reach, so we're going to use some longer screws just to get the nuts in. Then swap to the shorter ones. We're going to use M3x25s in the middle holes and M3x10s in the side holes. For the dampers, we'll use the long screws again to pull the nuts in, then swap them for M3x20s. The tops of the dampers do seem a little bit low. They're fairly well compressed when the axles are level. But I'm guessing with the low ground clearance, we don't really want too much up travel or we're going to be scraping the ground. With all four dampers fitted, we can pop the wheels back on, which leaves us with a largely complete back end. There's still a few more bits to add, but it's far enough that it'll get us rolling. Next, there's some more stripping to do. We only want the chassis plate with the sides and the ribs and a couple of the other bits. First, we can remove the deck. Now, I didn't stick this one down, so it's really easy to remove. If you use the double-sided tape, you might need to gently warm things up just to help soften the glue. Next, all the chains come off. Then we can flip it over and remove all the leg actuator bits. The coupler plate with the plastic parts. The front corners and the headache rack. And at the back, there's the two screws to attach the bumper. And we'll also retrieve the mud flaps, but we'll sort them out in a bit. And lastly, there's the remaining screws that attach the chassis rail. As we go, I've been putting all the bits in an ice cream tub, so if you want to go back to stock, all the bits are still available. So far, I haven't modified any of the Tamiya parts, so this is all quite reversible. At the front, we offer up the gooseneck assembly and see what else we need to remove. Looks like it's just the front two ribs, which is easy enough. It's only tricky if you've added the double-sided tape for the deck. It makes access to the nuts a bit of a pain. You can peel it back, but you do end up with a bit of a sticky mess. Okay, to fit the gooseneck, I'm going to use M3x8s in most of the holes, and M3x10s with washers from the Tamiya kit for the holes that go through the angle. The 3D printed part has hex-shaped holes for all the nuts, but from my printer they're very tight. We need to use a long screw to pull the nuts in, so they're bottomed out in the holes. We don't need to add nuts to all the holes, you can just hold the part up to the plate and check which ones you need to add a nut to. I suppose you could drill the missing holes in the plate, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. Now we just need to fit the screws. Also, to make it easier, I've pulled out the banana plugs and removed the gooseneck. Now, due to my printer not being 100% accurate anymore, I did find some of the holes weren't quite spot on. I'm sure with a nicer printer they'd probably be okay though. They are only slightly off, and with some force the screws do go in, but you can see the plate is slightly bent, which isn't ideal. On a second pass a bit later, I did go around with a small file just to slightly elongate the holes. That's not the fault of the parts though, it's just a bit of a bodge in this particular build. Now we can pop the gooseneck back on with the banana plugs and see how it looks. And yeah, I think that looks pretty tough. The main plate's going to be a bit bendy, but it certainly looks the part. Okay, the rear is pretty similar to the front. We need to remove the rearmost two ribs. This time we can leave the corner bits on and we'll need to keep the short strip of angle. Next we fit some nuts into the hex holes so the rear is ready to mount. Now we can flip it over and thread in the two front M3x8s, just loosely. 
slot the angle in and line up the holes. Use a couple of M3 by 10s to attach it. And lastly, we use two more M3 by 10s, this time with washers on the side angles. And of course, we need to nip up the two front screws. And well, that's about it. Nice and simple to attach. Although I did need to adjust a couple of the holes with a file, but again, I'm sure that's just my printer. For the deck, I was planning to use the strips from the Tamiya kit, however they're about an inch too long with the low boy parts. I want to keep everything reversible, so I'm not going to fit them. Instead, I think I'm going to make up a plywood deck in a single piece. That'll also have the advantage of turning the load area into a pretty solid box section if we mount the ply with some screws. There's a couple of other loose ends to tie up before we can give it a test. First we need to transfer the pin from the Tamiya plate to the gooseneck. We can reuse the pin, the screw and the nut. Once that's fitted we can clip the gooseneck back onto the trailer and add the banana plugs. And at the rear we need to transfer the mud flaps. On the Tamiya bumper we just need to remove the three small screws and the nuts. We need to keep the screws and the thin plates and of course the flaps themselves. And we don't need the nuts. Here's the ice cream tub I spoke about earlier and it's pretty full of parts from the trailer. Along with the deck strips and the chassis rails we've still got everything to reverse the process. Now I'm going to have to fit the mud flaps off camera as the trailer is now too long for my white box. Not too surprising really, but it's just the three screws per side. Having said that, after clearing a bit more space, we could just about see the end result. There's still lots of lights to rig up, electronics to add, and of course there will be wiring to hide somewhere. Should be an interesting puzzle, the chassis being so open, there's not many places to hide things. Anyway, that's the trailer rolling, so you might as well hook it up to the grand hauler and see how it goes. Right, I've popped the Huina digger on the trailer, so there's a bit of a load. It's fairly weighty, but nothing crazy. Even so, the main plate is flexing quite badly. There's really not that much stiffening up the plate. With a plywood deck firmly attached, it should take quite a bit more weight before bottoming out. I'm hoping to carry my 1 16th Tiger tank and other Tamiya trucks, which are quite a bit heavier than the digger. Otherwise, it does handle rather well. We're running fairly fast on a bumpy surface, and it's managing nicely. Indoors, it's going to be more than good enough. The only concern, of course, is the turning circle. It's bad enough with a Tamiya reefer, and the low boy is quite a lot longer. Also being so low, I can see it grounding out on the ramp up to the bridge. It's going to be interesting to try it out. Alright, that's about it for now. I've got more bits to source and design before we can do any more, but I think we made some good progress. Check out the Thingiverse page and consider building your own. It's quite a fun project. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!